Our rivers. Let's get our Instagram family in. Good morning, Instagram IG. God bless you. Streams of life. Now pushing for. Don't you want it? Don't you want it? <laughs> oh, yes. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Holy Spirit. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There is a flow. Hey. <clears throat> In the spirit. Good morning. It's time for school of the Holy Spirit. Hey, I am Bishop Coletta J. Ball. And I am a pneumatologist. As we navigate this flow together, let's go. <laughs> there is a flow, hey, <clears throat> in the spirit. Oh yes, teach us, dear Lord. Hey, good morning, Zoomers. To enter, hey, I'm singing alto. I'm singing tenor. I'm singing soprano. <laughs> I'm in the flow. Let's go. Hey, teach us to listen. Woo! It could be over there or there or there. Or there. Or there. Hey, good morning. God bless you as you're coming in for school this morning. Good morning, my pastors. Pastor Folsom, good morning. Pastor Melinda Watts, Rhonda Dooley, Deborah Brown. Thank you. Monica Oliver, good morning, darling. <clears throat> Jean Dutton, good morning. Good morning, Evangelist Apollonia Valenuva. Danny J. Mathis Stagg. Hola, Apollonia, I wish you could go to Nigeria with me. Pastor William Lamone, Evangelist the Kiba, congratulations on Regent University. Come on. <clears throat> good morning, Evangelist. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Camilla Cook. Let's go with Tanya. Phoenix, JJ Johnson, Wendy Brown, Dr. Patricia James. Just a little, just a little. Pastor Margaret Crosby. <coughs> Dr. Angela Marshall. Good morning, darling. Vicki Miller, my elder, Elder Gabriel Dilworth. Good morning, Genesis. Good morning, Life Changing. Good morning, Cathedral. Good morning. Put your name of your church there. Good morning, IG. Hey, teach us. Somebody put that in the chat. Good morning, LaShawn Renee. <laughs> good morning, Jonathan Day. One Bible study good last night. I love, if I could get 50 more students like you. <laughs> Overseer Ryan, God bless you. See Apollonia, let's go. Hey, yes, yes, yes. Let's go, let's go. Mountain of education. To enter. Put that in the chat. Thank you, Lisa. Teach us. Teach us. Somebody put that in the chat. Teach us. What is really important right now is that we are learning not just about the flow, but we are learning how to enter in to the flow. Good morning, Zoomers. Good morning, IG. Good morning, Peter. God bless you. Good morning, Dr. T Mitchell. Amen. Iris Mitchell. Doctor. I got a whole lot of Mitchells. What's okay? Y'all in your family, and I love it. <laughs> Good morning, Jeremiah 19. Rita Swain. God bless you. Hey, Jody Washington. Let's go. Hey, good morning. Good morning. There's a flow. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Janine Daly. Good morning, Dean Reginald Charles and Bishop. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Vita. God bless you. Speak. Congratulations on one year anniversary. Good morning, Deborah. Poetic morning. I love it. Get them in here, Pastor Wanda Sue. Tarina Storm. Good morning, Dream Center. Let's go. Hey. 
Camilla Cook, Jonathan Bowler. Good morning, son. Good morning, Cathedral. That's right, Tracy. Get him in. <laughs> Vanessa Robinson. Oh, hallelujah. Shimon Brown. God bless you, Alicia K. Hamilton coming up the timeline. Dr. Juliet, let's go. Hey, Pastor. Hey, there is a flow. Oh, God. There is. There is. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what she can Come on, IG, get your people in. God bless you. Teach us. <coughs> Good morning, Dr. Thea Wilson. God bless you. Janice, yes, Roberts, God bless you. There is a flow, folks. I'm telling you, don't let the devil trick you. Don't get tricked. Don't get bamboozled. <laughs> Listen, you can take a break, but stay in the flow. You can, you can move around. You can go quiet and stay in the flow. Oh, yes. They are there. Hey, Oh God. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us. Those of you that are on free conference call, we're back. We're back on the line. God bless you. If you need that information. Good morning, Evangelist Tamika. Good morning. Good morning, Gloria Thomas. Coming up the timeline, Jody Washington, Sonia Wilson, stay in the flow, stay connected. Praise God. Listen, folks. Ooh, I'm the overseer, Ryan. You better get your class in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch out for distractions. Good morning, Wendy. Thank you for being inspired. Thank you, Pastor William Lamar, Kimberly Long. Elder Demetrius Norman, let's go, let's go. Come on in here, Union, that's family. Yes, yes, yes. Karen Cruz, good morning, TJ. Stay, stay connected, folks. Stay connected to your flow. You know where you, you know where you get washed. You know where you get healed. You stay connected. Don't let anything break that connection because you don't ever know where the flow is going. So you gotta stay in the flow. Teach us how to stay. Teach us how to stay in the flow. Teach us how to overcome the spirit of offense. Teach us. Teach us. Come on, Kai Kai. Vanessa Webb, God bless you. Teach us. I love this. And you know, when God is was speaking this song to me, I was in, I was actually in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And I was down uh, ministering on the floor. I preached. I was at Truth Tabernacle, Bishop Haywood Parker. And when I walked down on the floor, I could hear water. And the organist started to like swiping over the keys. And I said, I hear water, I hear water, I hear water. I hear water. <clears throat> And I'm telling you, within a few moments, this song had been birthed. Come on, come on. I can't get enough of it. That's Stephanie Fry from the project with Bishop Gregory Davis. This is your day. Oh, you can go to our website and get the original. <laughs> hey. <coughs> Kimberly Long. Oh, wow, wow. I was in Rocky Mount. Do it. You can go on Apple Music. You can go on CD Baby. Download the project. Hey, glory. Teach us to hear. Think about that. Teach us to listen. When it's over here. Ooh. Oh, my God. There, 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 there. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, teach us. Hallelujah. Here or there. Teach us, dear Lord. <coughs> I 
Teach us to hear. Who will teach me to hear? Teach me to listen. Oh, yes. Oh, God, help me to be fluid. Help me to move. Help me. Don't let me get stabbed. Help me to keep up. How did it all say? Pushing for it. Yes. Papa Sykes. Good morning, darling. Lady Vicey. Good morning. Pastor Linda Staples. Good morning, class. Good morning, Pastor William Lamont. Good morning. Teach us. Teach us. Geraldine Sanders. Teach us. <coughs> Safe travel, Pastor William Lamont. Praying for you and your wife. Praying for your family. Good morning, Pastor Stella Dawson. Good morning. Jacqueline Bowers. Good morning. Jennifer Dooley. Good morning. Jody Washington. Teach us. Pastor Jonathan Davis. Good morning. Mama B. Good morning. Teach us. 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 You gotta go in now, folks. <laughs> this is the season and the moment where you must know the flow. Somebody put in the chat, I must know the flow. I must know. Zoomers, those of you on free conference, those of you that are here on Facebook, we have three spots where you can find us on my regular page, School of the Holy Spirit. Go tell it ministry. We're here on IG and then YouTube. Make sure that you have signed up. Why? Because hey, come on, Mashiach. Hallelujah. There's a flow. I must know the flow. Come on, put that in the chat. I must know the flow. I must know the flow. Glory to God. Stay connected. Stay connected. That, that's it. That's it. Nicolette, God bless you. Stay connected, folks, to the flow. I don't care what happens. I don't care what nobody says. You know where God has connected you. You stay. You stay connected to the flow. You stay to, you stay connected. Stay connected to the flow. Stay connected. I must know the flow and I must know, hallelujah, the ins, the out, the nuances of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> as we are learning, as we are walking this out, don't let, don't let any distractions derail you. Stay connected to the flow. I must know the flow. I must know. I must know and I must trust. I must trust. I, I, I can't trust my emotions. I can't trust my feelings. Oh, glory to God. I must stay connected. I got to get on class in the mornings. If I miss it in the morning, I got to watch it at night. And sometimes I got to watch it two, three times because I got to get it. I got to stay connected. I got to stay connected. Deacon Emma Rad, good morning. Pinky gifted hands, God bless you. I must stay connected. I must, don't get distracted with work. Don't get distracted. Pastor Chris, Chris God bless you. Is that Shaquille Mosley? Good morning. Hallelujah. I must stay connected. I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I got whatever I got to do. <laughs> Ooh, I must stay connected because I know the flow. I know that my life is in. It's in the balance. I know that my life is, is in the balance. I can't play with the flow. Y'all do what y'all got to do. I ain't going to disrespect nobody. I ain't going to, but I'm going to stay in the flow. I know where I'm connected. I know what brings life. Hallelujah. Rebuko Oshkataba. The uncoachable spirit. I love that. We take authority over that now. I must stay connected. This is not the time for me to be distracted. Good morning, Erica. I must stay connected. Good morning, Monica Monet. Hallelujah. 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 
Janet Rivers Richardson, I must stay connected. Kenya Crumbly, I must stay connected. Rhonda Tyler, Audrey Jackson, I must stay connected. Woo, Kenya Crumbly, I must stay connected. I got to watch what comes in my ears. I got to watch what comes out of my mouth. I got to watch what gets in my heart because the slightest thing can break the connection. Oh, Shaka Good morning, Cedric Brown. Good morning, Pastor Donald McIntosh. No distractions. I have to stay connected. I have to stay connected. I will not derail. Hallelujah, Mother Pearl. I must stay connected. I got to get up early to get on the class. Some of you are up three, four hours early because you realize the flow. You have to stay connected in the name of Jesus because of how the flow is flowing now. It is not. Uh, as predictable as it once was. I need you to hear what I'm saying. It's not as predictable as it once was. We are living in a season and in an hour <clears throat> where you can't predict. You can't already know. You're going to have to be connected. Holy Spirit is moving in such amazing ways that we're going to have to stay super connected, super alert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not as predictable as it used to be because there are so many false prophets. There are so many uh, untrained and unskillful voices that I've got. Your grace, Bishop Jackson. Hallelujah. 40 years connected, connected, connected. We are connected Listen to me. I want you to understand the covenant, the connection is vital to the flow. And the enemy is after the connection. The enemy wants you to get distracted. It's not as predictable as it once was. What do you mean, Bishop? Well, there was a time when you could see Catherine Kuhlman, Oral Roberts, R.W. Shambai, A.A. Allen. You could, these, these, Billy Graham, you, you could, you could, you could mark, you could map out what God was doing. You could see it. I remember as a child, my daddy would call me in the TV room. <laughs> we didn't know the word then. <clears throat> he would call me in the TV room. And when all Roberts would come, I don't know why he did that. You know, I never got a chance to ask my daddy, why, why you sent for me? Wow, that just hit me. All Roberts would be on. He said, get in here. Good morning, Dr. Matt, Shirley Maxine Stubbs. My, oh my God, my, my sister from another mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh God. And daddy would call me in. Hmm. Mm, that just hit me, folks. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> hey, Michelle Cotter, we must stay connected. Linda Lambert, we must stay connected. Alfred Banyard, we must stay connected. You got to fight the sleep. You got to fight the lazy. You got to fight it. He would call me and Catherine Kuma would be on. It'd be like a Sunday. Old Roberts would be on. All of these various people would be on. And he would call me into the TV room and make me sit down and watch it. I'm just thinking about that now. Wow. I would, oh, I got I got I got to find out. Here you mommy. Mommy would be in the kitchen or doing something, but he would say, Coletta, get in here. He would make me sit and watch that. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. That's how we do it. Hallelujah. And now daddy, father, Holy Spirit is calling you in. Same way my father called me. Thank you, Melinda. I see that. The same way. So why? Because it's not as predictable. Look at look at TJ. He was, I wonder what he knew. What did God tell my daddy? <laughs> oh my God. Woo! -hoo. And he would sit there. He said, You see that? And I would say, Yes, I would be so intrigued. Catherine Kuhlman just intrigued me. I was just intrigued. I was just always so intrigued by how God used her. And she always spoke of the Holy Spirit. Be careful of predators. Yes, yes. Be careful, be careful. 
And when you get separated from your herd, yes, that's right, LaShawn, you are the most vulnerable. Good morning, my pastor, Sheila Donald Johnson. Good morning, precious. Good morning. Wow, he wanted to expose me. And I was, I'm just thinking that just hit me. Wow. So it was predictable. You could kind of see, you know, a pattern. You remember in the in the late 60s, some of you may not remember, early 70s, maybe, when the faith teachers first, Kenneth Hagen, Dad Hagen, uh, first started coming out. Marilyn Hickey, they were on the radio. And then the rest of them began to come, the Savelle, you no, know, the Copelands, and then uh, Jared Savelle, Fred Price. These people, y'all remember Dr. Skillman? You remember that? It was predictable. Kata bohush kata. It was much, much, much more, more predictable, but it's not as predictable as it once was. Good morning, my baby's chief, my baby girl, and my Alan. Good morning. Listen to me very carefully. I need you to hear that. Those mantles. I'm just thinking about how God was connecting me to those mantles even then. I was just a child. I didn't know. I don't know what my daddy knew. I don't know what God spoke to him. I know a few things, but he was connecting me to those mantles. Hallelujah. He was connecting me to those mantles. Hallelujah, Bishop Jackson. Thank God for our dads and our moms that some things they didn't know, Leola Rucker, they didn't even know. John Andrew Hart, they didn't even know. Good morning, Solomon. They didn't even know. Uh, Natasha, they didn't know, but they 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 had an inkling. Good morning, Dr. Patricia Jackson. They had an inkling. Carol says, me and my mom would watch those programs together as a younger. I would be so, I would be so intrigued and amazed. I would be so, so amazed, so intrigued. And all I all I can remember was the, the miracles, the signs and the wonders. It was, be careful what you put before your children. If you want, you, you can map their spirits. You can map their spirits. Map, map them. Be careful what you, don't put violence and, 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 uh, profanity and lewdness and disrespect in front of them. Put the things of God in front of your children. Even on those iPads and things like that. Now, be careful how you map your children. We had TV. It was just a little small TV. And we were in the TV room, just me and my dad. He was mapping my spirit. He was mapping my, my spirit, man. He was putting the map in front of my spirit. Now, because it's not as predictable as it once was, Pastor John Davis, coming up the time, and I map your children for God. Map your children for the Holy Spirit. Map your children. Be careful what you put and be careful what others will try to put in front of your children. Now, because it's not as predictable. See, now everything is so scattered. There's so much in the spirit world now that is not from God. There is so much now. Uh, Tanya Shelton, Toraba, uh, Mary Ann Patterson. There's so much now. Reba Babasata. That is not from God. That is circulating on social media. Everybody has a mic now. Everybody has a platform. So being able to stay connected, Apostle Blackwell, is not as predictable as it used to be. I, I don't remember false prophets. I don't remember... Uh, Things like that on TV. I remember, oh God, I'm trying to think of this man's name. He was out of Ohio. Um, had a huge, huge ministry. One of the first uh, that was on TV. But they, they, they were solid Bible preachers with signs and wonders. And uh, you didn't, I didn't see 
the false. I didn't see the counterfeit. It wasn't as clear. So Bible teaching, Bible lessons, miracles, signs, wonders, those things were present, Mama Craig. They were present. But now there's so much of an intrusion of the deception. There's so much now of the false that is walking parallel with the real, with the authentic. You understand? You know, and, and so there's so much that now culture has approved. You know, I, 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 I will say this. <laughs> I am becoming so clear about why the old saints were, 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 were restrictive the way they were that, you know, we couldn't wear pants to church. You know, we, we couldn't even hardly go to the movies. I think my first movie was Imitation of Life. And my mom and dad both went with me, got dressed up like we was going to church. <laughs> um. I, I, I remember, you know, when the saints would say that women shouldn't dress like men. And we was like, what are you talking about? I remember when, you know, uh, and we thought it was so hard. You know, you shouldn't, shouldn't wear pants and shouldn't wear this. And, you know, I, I get it. I get it now. I get it. But it was to protect us from crossing those boundaries. Come on, LaShawn. It was to protect us, to set us apart. Come on, Davis. <laughs> and 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 we 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 thought it was wrong. We thought when we got adults that it, it was wrong. Remember pants, the, the sign being up in the foyer of the church, no pants in the sanctuary, talking to the women. They were protecting us from the predators. They were protecting us from the predators. They, they, they were. So now, now you see this, this flood of mixture. Now you see this flooding of mix. Rex Humbard, yeah, you know you, you in my head. Good God Almighty! It was Rex Humbard, his wife was something, uh, Maud, was it Maud? Rex Humbert, I met him, I had a chance to meet him, and he gave me a word, he gave me a word. My mother would take me to the cathedral tomorrow. He was the first person on, on TV, Rex Humbert, we would watch him. He had a huge church. The, politis, the politicalization of the gospel now, wow, absolutely, Denise Wellens Glover. Ah, now everything is so muddled. <laughs> Come on, Shell. Now, 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 now everything is so, so uh, mixed in. Everything is so mixed in. Everything is so, you know, and, 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 oh, I got to go, John. I got to watch him. And but then things were clear. But as you have watched the 60s, the 70s, uh, Marilyn Hicken, those came through. And then the charismatic movement came through. So the flow was easy to follow. You could see the law of the spirit in operation clearly. But now everything in the name of culture has gotten into the flow. And so you have got to be able to, to discern it because it's not as predictable as it once was. I'm teaching really good. You got to hear me. <clears throat> Good morning to my beautiful sister. Oh my God, the, 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 it was so clear. But now it is not as clear. Now you are, you are checking yourself 
Is it right or is it wrong? Should I or should I not? Uh, I teach a class called Those Preaching Women, Tribe of Women. It's about 400 of them over there now. And um, I tell them that you should never be in the pulpit preaching with pants on. You should never be in the pulpit, the chancel, the sacred space with your pants on preaching. And it's like, you know, because I have a mixture of aspiring and emerging and 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 established women in there, those, those, and and they're like, well, but I said, no, no, listen to me carefully. Hold the standard. Hold the standard. Hold the standard. And 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 people get get confused. I, I'm not confused. Stay in the flow. Stay in the flow. You, you should never carry the word of God in the chance. If you are a worship leader, this is what I say. You should never be in that sacred space where I, 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 I'm distracted. I need to worship. I need to worship. Men should not wear their caps and hats in the sacred space. You, you shouldn't be in your church with a hat on your head. I'm talking and you ain't going to like it, but I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. See, it's not as predictable. <laughs> oh, Elder Demetrius, listen. Oh, my God. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't think that ripped jeans and ripped pants and I know what culture is saying. But I need to stay in the flow of Holy Spirit. It's difficult for me to sing holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's difficult for me to say just as I am without one plea. And, and all I can see is your body parts. I, I don't think that that's the flow. <laughs> now, I'm going to stay on this side. I'm old-fashioned maybe. I didn't think I would ever be the one that said I'm old fashioned, but I just believe that there's a flow in the spirit. Somebody tag somebody because y'all ain't gonna like this kind of preaching. And, 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 and I believe, thank you, uh, TJ, that these landmarks are boundaries to keep us in the flow. I'm talking to preachers. I'm talking about it. Somebody say, uh, bring choir robes back. Hallelujah. 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 I just believe that we have, we have gotten away from the standards, the boundaries that keep us in the flow. I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with evil or righteous. I don't believe it's sin. I just believe that it's a distraction to the flow of Holy Spirit. I just believe that. And I am watching how the intensity of Holy Spirit is lessening and lessening and lessening and lessening in our sanctuary services. Now, I know there's youth nights. I know that there's women's nights. I know that there's men's fellowship. I'm, I'm not even dealing with that. I know there's, you know, those services that are fellowship services that are, you know, certainly not uh, formal or liturgical times, but it's fellowship, there's food, there's teaching, there's all of these things. But I'm not, I'm not dealing with those moments. I'm not dealing with youth services and youth ministries and, and those times when, when, you know, you are not in a formal liturgical setting. Some of you don't even know what that is anymore. I'm talking, I'm watching preachers in sweatsuits on Sunday. I'm watching, you know, 
I'm, I'm, I'm just watching how this thing is trickling. And, and, and I truly believe, and I will only say it because it's my, my moment to speak, praise God. I will say that it's lessening the intensity of the flow. I, I, I just believe that. I believe that along with the word, there is a standard, there are boundaries, there are landmarks. There, there is a law of the spirit. Ah, oh, You know, when a woman goes in her closet on Sunday and she 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 doesn't know if she should wear pants or skirt, or she doesn't know, you know, I just think that it's it's trying to 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 it's trying to it is not trying it is it is it is minimizing the sacredness it's minimizing the holiness we have made church culture and culture church and and and, and it's so easy for people to fall into it they're so listen there if if you have if you are a female and I can't tell you a female because of the clothes you wear. If you are wearing men's clothing, you are shopping in the men's department. You are wearing men's shoes and men's pants and men's shirts. I, I, I'm, I'm saying something. You know what drives me crazy is when I see these makeup uh, commercials on of Facebook and social media, and it's a man that's doing it. His eyelashes, his, I'm like, what is going on? Am I crazy? And that has nothing to do with your quote unquote sexual orientation. It has to do with a misrepresentation. And it is to deceive. It is to distract. The law of the spirit. It come out to you, of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the world, from the from the law of sin and death. They say, well, we're bringing the world. No, you're not bringing the world. The world doesn't want a washed down Christ. The world doesn't want a washed down church. The world doesn't want a worldly leader. When the world comes into the church, it will be the power of Holy Spirit and the demonstration of God's word in action that will draw the world. It will not be this made up silly putty uh, etch a sketch brand of Christianity. They're not attracted to that. The world wants the power of God. The world wants the genuine, authentic Christ of Scripture. If you're delivered, you're delivered. If you're free, you're free. Your clothing. That lady said to me Sunday, and I thought this was so powerful. Lisa, I hope I can share your testimony. She just said something to me that stirred my spirit. And uh, as it stirred me, Tracy, it stirred me. It, it spoke volumes to me as a leader. See, people got to hear the Holy Spirit for themselves. I, I can create the atmosphere. I can, I can create a culture. But people got to hear the Holy Spirit for themselves. And as, as this young woman came to us, shared her testimony, but Sunday, uh, as, as she's moving into a, 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 a position within the local church of serving, and I looked and I said, whoa, she's a gorgeous woman, good Lord. And she said, I, I just went to her, I said, wow. And she said, Bishop, the Lord spoke to me and said, take off the grave clothes. Take off your grave clothes. Take off your grave clothes. Whew. That thing broke me. I said, yes, ma'am. See, when people hear Holy Spirit 
for themselves. <laughs> Prophet Stubb says the White House and the courthouse has certain attire that you must wear. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's some judges you cannot walk in their courtroom with your pants sagging and with raggedy clothes on. You can't stand before certain judges. They won't allow it. That's why the judge has a robe on. That's why the people that work in the courtroom, they have a certain dress code. Are you listening to me? There's so much out here that wants to steal your attention from the flow of God. And so the flow is not as predictable as it used to be. You're going to have to discern it. Felicia, you're going to have to discern it. She said, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, take off your grave clothes. Good God Almighty. See, you know, when you as a shepherd, you know when God has spoken to somebody. I couldn't have never said that. I, I couldn't have never, I couldn't have never said that. <laughs> you know, when absolutely Erica, when you go into surgery, everybody got on something specific. We have to scrub. We have to put on scrubs. We have to put on certain attire. When you walk in those halls as a nurse, when I was doing rounds, you didn't wear what you wanted to wear, even though they have lessened it from the white uniform and the white cap, there still is a dress code. N O R in surgery. Them doctors can't just come up in there just any old kind of way. That anesthesiologist, everybody doesn't matter. There's a there's there's a standard. And when when she said that to me, she said, "Listen, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, take off those grave clothes." See, it's not a matter of whether or not. You're delivered is whether or not you present, you show up as delivered. Because we, we're not with you at night. We don't know what, what, but there is a progressive sanctification process where everyone can see that you're working to be in the flow of Holy Spirit. I want to show you a scripture, and I probably have shared this with you before, but I want to show you something. And go to Genesis chapter number one. Go to Genesis chapter number one. And we are still digging into the law of the spirit. Come on, Mama Pearl. <laughs> she said, I know, Bishop, we had to be in scrubs. You couldn't. Funeral directors. Wow. 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 I know you're right. All right. You, when they walk up in there, they better be right. And the military, come on, has a dress code. My God, I, I knew what it, when it was summer, when it was winter, based on the color that my daughter wore. She had on her whites, I knew it was summer. She had on her blues, I knew it was winter. We have a dress code in every situation. Everywhere that we go, we know what it is that we are wearing based on uh, the, the colors, blaze, how we present the military. I know who the Navy is. I know who the Army is. I know who the Air Force is. I know the cadets. I know the captains and the officers. You know them by their dress code. And that's one thing Sam ain't never did. Sam ain't never changed the dress code. I don't get the church. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And when you show up, when you show up, it you either lead people or you confuse people. You confuse people. Oh my God, I just need somebody to say yes. <laughs> if I'm talking, oh, she said, take off them grain clothes. That thing blessed me. That thing. I want you to go to Genesis. And here's a law of the spirit. Here's a law of the spirit that I want to teach you that started in the beginning i want you to see this in the hospital every discipline has their own attire absolutely housekeeping cafeteria medical nursing uh physical therapy everybody you know you know oh 
here comes the nurse. Oh, here comes physical therapy. Oh, here comes the surgeon. Oh, here comes the anesthesiologist. Listen, folks, and I'm saying this to you. You cannot change your church or your leadership, but you can change the way you're thinking. And some of you, I just hear this by the spirit, you're being massaged by the culture and you're lessening your standard. And I want to challenge you right now. I want to challenge you to get in the flow. I want to challenge you to stay in the flow. I don't care what they say. I want you to hear Holy Spirit for yourself. When you go into the house of the Lord for a liturgical moment, for a formal moment of worship, I want you to think seriously about what I'm sharing with you today. And I, I know some of us have, have, maybe we're not all the way out, but we, we, we're lessening and lessening and lessening and lessening. When you look at the firefighters, you, they have a uniform. You look at the police, they have a uniform. When you look around, listen to me carefully. You know who's who. You know, when you look at Secret Service that, that surrounds the president of the United States of America, you know who they are. You can look in the crowd and you know who they are. They have a certain stand. They have a certain way that they look and present themselves. I'm just saying, I remember when men could not wear a red shirt or red tie in the pulpit. Bet not have on nothing of color. Black suit, white shirt, black tie. <laughs> Dark suits, one no, one no fancy red suits and pink suits and yellow suits, gray, brown, black, and blue. And I'm not saying that you have to limit it to the color. I'm simply trying to get us to understand that there is a law of the spirit. There's a way to stay connected to the flow. Look at Genesis chapter number one. And I just want you to see something. I want you to hear the heart of God as I try to share with you where I believe we have erred, where we have erred, why we're not in the flow, why we're not seeing signs, wonders, and miracles, why we're not seeing it. The church, yes, is in an identity crisis. Oh my God, come on here. Come on here in an identity crisis. And I don't know if it's identity theft. I don't know if the world has stolen it or we gave it away. They want to say, oh, that's just old fashioned. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. My God, my God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's something going on, folks. So you got to be very discerning to stay in the flow. You got to be discerning. Don't for one minute think it's acceptable. Don't for one minute think, oh, this is just the way new things are. No, God's standard hasn't changed for his people. Leviticus 10 and 10, put a difference between what is clean and unclean. Put a difference. You got to do it in your heart. Your church may be opening up. Your church may be opening up. Your ministry may be opening up, but you have to stay in the flow. I want you to see this and I'm going to Genesis and this is something that governs my life, governs me as I deal with the law of the spirit. Everything in Genesis chapter number one, according to the word of God was good. Everything was good. Genesis chapter number two, uh, God begins to give history or give uh, give uh, design and purpose to what he has created. God begins to give him identity and purpose and responsibility. Now, in Genesis 2, verse 15, just go there with me for just a moment, Iva. <laughs> The Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, verse 16, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Go with me. Y'all got to lean in on this one. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, the female man was not present at this time. We see in verse 18 that now the creator Elohim says, ah, it's not good for you to be here by yourself. All right. So he creates for him a help me. But I need you to understand, Overseer Lanita, <laughs> I need you to understand as we are moving forth, I believe that this is what has crept into the culture of the church today. The knowledge of good and evil. Somebody write that down. Somebody write, I'm going someplace. I need you to lean in, lean in. There's an infiltration in the house of God God of the knowledge of good and evil. I need you to hear this. Lean all the way in, folks. The knowledge of good and evil mixed cohabitating together. This, this combination tree, this combination tree, this, this tree that presents options, I'm, I'm going somewhere, is deadly to your flow. This tree of options. This tree that gives you a choice and mixes it all together and is presented as a viable option to the tree of life. I need you to see this. I, 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 it's deadly, folks. It's deadly. And I'm not talking about your church. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about what kills your flow. Notice this. I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this. Listen to what in the, here is the beginning, what we call the law first mention. Here is where we started to go off. The tree of life, the tree of life was planted in the midst of the garden. Verse number nine, and out of the ground, Genesis two and nine, the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Oh, come on, I need y'all to hear this. So it's not as predictable. It's not as clear. And when we start saying, oh, okay, well, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to go, I, I, I don't know, all these other trees, all these other things that God made good. But here is the tree, I need you to hear me, of the knowledge of good and evil cohabitating and growing on the same tree. Mixture, mixture, mixture. Somebody write that down, mixture, mixture. 
And so when we come together in, in our worship experiences, there's so much mixture. There's so much mixture. Anytime there is a tree that has both good and evil on it, anytime there is a tree that has both good and evil, you're not smart enough. We are not wise enough to pick the good and not the evil. Why? Because it's all mixed in together. The tree produces mixture. Y'all not going to like this. You're not going to like this kind of preaching. You're not going to like it. I'm telling you. Most of us have been seduced and we are compromising with the world and the culture. We are being taught to accept things. We are being taught to accept things easily and readily. We're being given a visual of, okay, we accept this now. We're being given a visual of it's all right now. We're, be, we're giving a visual that, okay, what was our standard is no longer our standard. That's just old fuddy-duddy. That Okay, I'm telling you, there's a law of the spirit. You got to hear me. And the day that you eat of it, you will begin to die. Mm. Woo, the day that you eat of it, you will begin to die. The day you eat of it, you will begin to die. Now watch this. All of the other trees that are in the garden are good. All of the other trees in the garden have God's approval. All of the other trees, you, you have access to it. And then there's the tree of life that is in the midst of the garden. And there's only one tree that you should not touch. And that tree is called mixture. I'm, I'm going someplace. That tree is called mixture. Good and evil. The mixture, Bishop Frazier. The mixture that's in your life. The mixture that you've accepted. The mixture that fivefold ministry leaders are pushing out to the people in the congregation. Listen to me carefully. The day you eat of it. The day you eat of it. You surely got the your sensitivities, your alertness, the, the way in which you handle yourself. You can't change your church. I'm not talking to your church. I'm not talking to your leader unless your leader's here. I'm talking to you. You want to be in the flow. You want to stay in the flow, but you like that tree of good and evil. You like a little church and a little club. You like a little church and a little drinking. You like the church and some weed. You like the church and, you know, your discombobulation of what to wear, how to handle yourself. You like all of this. It's just mixture. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be served on our tables. We were never supposed to have that. It entered into the church. Jude says from ungodly men who came in subtly, secretly and changed the grace of God into lasciviousness. And some of you have eaten from that tree. I'm here today to stop the dying. I'm here to tell you that God has given us his Holy Spirit to remedy, to, to heal, to cast out, to deliver. And listen, all of us, in our minds, we're rush, we're rationalizing, we're wrestling with, we're we're trying to decide: is it good 
or is it evil? Maybe it's not good or evil. Maybe it's good and evil. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody need to hear me. And that's why it's so hard for you to decide. That's why it's so, so, so hard for us to discern. Because it's not good or evil. Elder Clifton. Yes, And you're gonna need Holy Spirit baptism. You're gonna need Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. You're gonna need Holy Spirit leadership to keep you from that tree, to expose the death that is in that tree. The knowledge of good and evil. Not the knowledge of good or evil. So you can't choose. See, if you eat from that tree, you're going to get both good and evil. Y'all not hearing me today. If you eat from that tree, you're going to get both good and evil. When you change your dress code, when you change the way you preach, when you change the way that you go in the sacred space, when you change the way in which you are ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you change the way that you let your children go to church, when you change the and you modify all of the things that were the standards of the ancient saints. When you go to movies and you can sit through a whole movie of sexual promiscuity and pornography and profanity. When you can sit through a whole movie that straight up cusses the whole. When you can sit and watch it in your TV, in your house. When you can go into these places and then go to church on Sunday. It's not good at or evil is good and evil. And when we don't call it out, see, because we have denied the power of the Holy Spirit. We have talked about Jesus. We have talked about salvation. We have talked about the crucifixion. We have talked about the resurrection, but we have not talked about Pentecost. We have not talked about the power of the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. We have not talked about the power of the Holy Spirit to give us discernment. Even if it's allowed in my church, that's not what the Holy Spirit said to me. You worship leaders that allow anything. You elders that allow anything. Anybody can work the altar. They can come up to the altar. They can come from the club the night before. You have no discernment. People are coming to the altar to be delivered. To be demons to be cast out. And you got people working the altar with demons. There's no altar training. There's no consecration. There's no, there's no life. And so we wonder why we don't see the signs, the wonders, the miracles. Because we have broken the law of the spirit in so many places. I told And some of you have accepted it. You have, you have, you have applauded it. You have supported it. You want a move of God. And let me tell you something. You may have a lot of people, but it don't mean it's a move of God. I've learned that. I, it took me a long time to learn it. You, you may, you may have a whole, whole, whole church full of folk, but it doesn't mean. That God is in the midst. You can work up a ladder. You got great music. You got some great preaching. You got great people, great giving. You're in a great sanctuary. But the move of God is compromised because of the tree of mixture sitting in the midst of your church, sitting in the midst of your home. What do you allow your children to watch? What do you and your husband watch? What, what's going on in, in the in, in the dark rooms of their of their bedrooms? What are they watching on the on the TV? What are they looking at on the internet? What are they or do you check their phones? Do you check the iPads? Do you even care that the knowledge of good and evil is going right into their minds, right into their heart? You're mapping their, you turn, you give them a device and turn your head. What are these schools teaching? What books are your children reading? The knowledge of good and evil is always present to kill us, to kill our anointing, to kill our sensitivities to God, to kill our love for God, to kill our passions for the lost, to kill us. And the day you eat, you surely die. 
There is a flow. But it's in the spirit. And the day that you eat of it, you will die. I've had to check myself. I said, oh no, I can't watch that. Ooh, everybody said, you need to go watch this. You need to go see that. Do you have Hulu? Do you have Netflix? I have all of it. Do you watch it? No. I started watching that thing called Brigaton. And when I started watching it, the Holy Spirit said, you can't watch this. You, you can't, boo. You ain't got to tell me twice because the knowledge of good and evil is flowing through. I started watching some other stuff. I ain't seen nothing that I can just watch because it's the knowledge of good and evil. It's, I just can't sit. Because I want to stay in the flow. I know you're not liking me. I know you're not liking me. But I'm telling you, once you eat from that tree, your sharpness in God begins to lessen. Your discernment, your 2020 vision of God begins to get blurry. And all it takes is just a little bit of leaven to leaven that whole lump. And before you know it, You've been annihilated. A sniper then got you. Your prayer life is compromised. Your time in the word is compromised. Your desire for God is compromised. Your desire for worship is compromised. Your desire to go to church is compromised. Your desire to serve is compromised. You got out the flow. It was simple and it appeared innocent but it was mixture all day long. I got to get out of here. God in the name of Jesus. Purify our hearts. Purify us. Give us back our love, our first love. Holy Spirit, we need you now more than ever. In the name of Jesus, I got to get out of here. Oh, my God. Share this on your pages, folks. We love you so much. God is looking for a people that's already sensitive to the Holy Ghost. God is looking for people that know the difference between clean and unclean. And make no make no compromise. I got to get out of here. See y'all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The law of the spirit.